Hey guys, Survivor here. Today I'm bringing you an in-depth Bloodhound guide based on my experiences with him and experimenting what works and what does not. I'll be splitting this guide into two different main playstyles, passive and aggressive. You can combine elements from both playstyles, making you an efficient hybrid. Best of both worlds, you could say. Both playstyles use some of the same elements as each other, so I'll go over those in a section I like to call Shared Tactics. Now starting off with the basics, what does your kit include? You have your passive ability, which allows you to see events that the enemy players have performed. This includes, but is not limited to footsteps, slight marks, door openings, bleeding, and killer spots. These show up as small diamond sheet boxes in the map and should not be too hard to spot. The passive also shows the exact time the event happened, but the mark does disappear after 60 seconds. Next up is your tactical ability. Your tactical pings through surfaces and structures in front of you and alerts you if there is an enemy nearby. You'll be able to see their location at the time of the ping, so it will give you some direction as to where the enemy might be if you push them. The range on this ability is rather short, and the cooldown is 30 seconds. As for your ultimate ability, it is pretty damn good. You gain a 25% speed boost to your movement and the ability to see enemies highlighted in red while the rest of the world is black and white. In addition to those two main skills, you'll be able to see enemy footprints on the ground and efficiently track an enemy's location, giving you the advantage. This ability lasts for 35 seconds and is a pretty fast charging ultimate. Now that we have the basic kit out of the way, let's talk about those playstyles, starting out with the shared tactics section. As a bloodhound, your main weapon is your intel. You need to be constantly on the lookout for footsteps or other enemy actions that might give hint to where the enemy has run off to. You can easily find out an enemy's general direction by finding a few marks and seeing what their ages are. Let's say you find a footstep 46 seconds old and then find one 43 seconds old, just north of that older footstep. Now you should know that the enemy is most likely not going to be south, southwest or southeast. Most likely options are north, northwest and northeast. West and East are still an option, but should not be a priority for your eyes unless new information comes up. Also a thing to remember, your teammates do not see these marks. Update them with information 24-7. The last thing that is really shared is how you should use your tactical while in a close range firefight. If you trade damage with the enemy and you retreat to heal, you should pop your tactical if available to see if the enemy is dashing for you some other direction or sitting still. The ability shows the character models, so you'll see if they're moving and in what direction. That is all for the share tactics section, now it's time for the special playstyles. Starting off with the passive setup, you would ideally want a long range gun, such as the triple take, a scout, a longbow, or even the crabber, if you're lucky enough to get that. As for your secondary, you want to have a pistol that is able to dish out damage at close range if you get flanked. The wingman is a great pistol for this boasting huge 45 base damage to the body and 90 to the head without the skull piercer hop up. Alternatively, the auto pistol is decent as well, but not quite on par with the wingman. You might do better with it if you do not have that great of a name though. Your tactical will always be used to check buildings if you have a suspicion someone might be in it. You do not want to be caught off guard with a medium to long range based loadout. As for your ultimate, this is where a loadout truly shines in its own way and differs greatly from the aggressive playstyle. Ideally, you want to pop your ultimate in a long range fight, or if you're looking for the last squad in any environment really. The black and white world will allow you to see the enemies highlighted in red easily, even over long ranges. This will make hitting snipes a lot easier and less about finding the enemy and more about aiming. Now there is a mistake I've seen many people do when playing a more passive bloodhound, and that is not utilizing his huge movement speed buff of 25%. If an enemy starts shooting at you in a long range fight, Go behind cover and reposition. You're fast as lightning, move quickly, pop back out, shoot a few times and reposition again. Your enemy will be left paranoid and disoriented because they want to know where you will hit next from. This will allow your teammates and you to get those kills. Also, don't be afraid to use your ultimate just to run for your life. If you're stuck in a close range engagement and the odds are not in your favor, sprint out of there and re-engage later from a more favorable angle. Alright, I think that is it for passive playstyle, let's move on to the aggressive side. The aggressive bloodhound is my personal favorite when it comes to playing the legend. Opening things up here with the aggressive bloodhound setup, you should ideally look for the R99 or another SMG of your choosing, but I don't really like the prowler or the alternator. 
you should also pick up the Peacemaker, or alternatively the Mastiff if you're fortunate enough to scavenge one. You can swap out any of these weapon categories for a Wingman, if that puts her boat better. I personally rock the Wingman every chance I get, but that requires great aim, and it might not be suited for everyone. Now, your tactical will most of the time go towards checking your surroundings right before you head into a fight, just to give you that slight upper hand. This differs from the passive playstyle, because you will almost never be engaging aggressively with the passive playstyle. Your ultimate turns you into a monster, a killing machine, a force to be reckoned with. Your main use for the ultimate is to pop it right before heading into a firefight, or just to look for one, and fast. You should always combine your ultimate with your tactical if you can, allowing you to gain even more information on what to do in a certain scenario. If there are three enemies above you in one room, and you're alone, it's probably smart to try and isolate the players in the 1v1s with your superior movement speed. When you have a situation locked down and you know where the enemies are, it becomes a kill fest where you should come on top. Many people like to combine Bloodhound's ultimate with Bangalore smokes, but I don't think you need them if you just outplay your opponents by using the extra intel you get and the huge movement buff. Sure, the smokes help by denying vision, but they're not a must. I've seen a lot of people using the ultimate and kind of sitting still the whole time. Your key is movement, the enemies will not be able to keep up with you if you have your team there to help and fire on them as well. Now, what about solo fights? Well, that's tough luck. Bloodhound is one of the best legends to win a solo fight with, but it is always going to be a rough one, and definitely an uphill battle. If things do end up looking bad though, let's say you go low on health. Just run. Run like your life depended on it, which it quite frankly does. You will outrun all the other legends and the chance of another ulting bloodhound chasing you is minuscule. After you've healed and are ready to fight again, dash in for another round. Hey, you might even have some ult left after healing because of that long 35 second timer. And that I guess wraps it up, my first video about Apex Legends and hopefully the first of many to come. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll catch you with the next one. Survivor out.